Hey, good evening, everybody. God bless you guys. Once again, declaring a very blessed and prosperous day and evening over you and your family. The title of tonight's message, we must be cautious with what we're hearing. We must be cautious with what we're hearing, okay? We'll get into a, a word of prayer to start, as we always do, and we're going to look at uh, just one text of Scripture tonight, Mark chapter 4, out of the Amplified Classic, Mark chapter 4, verses 23 through 25, all right? So let's get started with prayer, and then we'll get into this message. We must be cautious with what we're hearing. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, as we come before you tonight, and Father, we know that we know that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Father, it makes all the difference as to what we're hearing, whether we are filled with faith or whether we are filled with fear. Father, I thank you that there is a difference between facts and truth. Father, not everything that we see, not everything that we hear that may even seem factual to us is the actual truth because the truth is the word of God. The truth is Christ Jesus himself, the spirit of God who lives and dwells on the inside of us. Father, I thank you, Lord, for opening our hearts and our minds tonight. Father, to, we have a, just a tremendous perception, a trend, tremendous discernment to seek and know and acknowledge truth. Father, we thank you for that, Lord. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. I pray over each and every person right now as I thank you that we come together right now of one mind, of one accord, that we're truly unified in the faith by grace, always with the pure motive of love. Father, I thank you right now for just igniting a desire on the inside of us, Father, to seek your truth, to want to hear your truth, and to want to walk in your truth at all times. For you said we would know the truth and the truth would set us free. So Father, we thank you for it, Lord, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, once again, the title of the message, we must be cautious with what we're hearing. Mark chapter four, starting at verse 23. Jesus speaking. If any man has ears to hear, let him be listening and let him perceive and comprehend. And he said to them, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth that you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hear. Given what? Given truth. Verse 25, for to him who has will more be given. And from him who has nothing, even what he has will be taken by force. All right. Those three verses, there's a lot in there. Now, I want us to think about what are we hearing on a daily basis? I always say I believe it's very important that we stay informed to what's going on in the world. But then again, by spending a lot of time being informed by what's going on in the world, we have to give ourselves to a place of taking in information, right? Right? And I've got to be honest, when you turn on the news media, whether it's Fox, CNN, which always seem to be the exact opposite, you turn on your social media, you're taking in information constantly. And there's a lot of things that look and they sound good, but how much of it is really truth? How much of it is really truth? How much time are we giving to hearing all of the information that this world tries to present to us, everything that's going on. And I really believe with all my heart that what he said right here is the difference between a person either being filled with faith or being filled with fear. Now, if you're a born again child of God, if you're committed to being filled with the Holy Spirit, then we have a great discernment. We have a great instinct on the inside of us that enlightens us to the truth. We recognize truth when we hear it, amen? And the Bible says three different areas of truth. John 14, six, you hear me quoted all the time. Jesus first and foremost, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by and through me. That's why the words of Jesus are so very important to me. In 1 John chapter five, it says the spirit or the Holy Spirit is truth. In John 17, 17, sanctify them, purify them by truth. Your word is truth. So with childlike faith, first and foremost, I chose a long time ago because I was seeking truth. 
That's what I was doing. I really, all the different things I was doing, and I was doing so many different worldly things in the process of seeking truth, wondering what, what is everything about, right? And it's only when, when, I had a, when I had an encounter with the Lord and he brought to me the word of God and I saw that in his word that Jesus, the spirit of God and the word of God is truth, that when I, took, when I, when I came to him with childlike faith and said, Lord, from this day on, I take first and foremost your word as truth. So the spirit empowered me to immerse myself, even to this day, continually in the word of God or the truth of God's word. Uh, do I spend time uh, being informed by the world with what's going on? Yeah, I take a little bit of time each day to see what people have to say. But I have to be very cautious with what I'm hearing because now I've come to the point, I don't know with what I'm hearing when it comes to the world's information or quote being informed by the world, what is truth and what is not. So with that said, I want to read this again, Mark chapter 4, 23 through 25. And once again, this is the difference between you either being filled with faith or being filled with fear. And the same way the faith of Christ within you um, developed, activated, receives, positions you to receive the blessings of God Fear positions you, when activated, the spirit of fear positions you to receive the lies or the curse of the devil. So it's very, very important that we're walking in faith and not in fear. Well, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now listen, fear comes by hearing and hearing by the lies of the devil. Remember, Satan has always tried to closely imitate whatever God has done. So with that said, let's go back, Mark chapter 4, 23 through 25. If any man has ears to hear, let him be listening and let him perceive and comprehend or understand it. And he said to them, be careful, be cautious with what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth that you hear, not the lies that you hear, the truth that you hear will be, met the, will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear. So I can be listening to what seems to be the truth, but is actually a lie. And now it says here in verse 25, for to him who has, will more be given. So whom, him who is listening and receiving the truth, more of it will be given to him. More understanding, more comprehension. And from him who has nothing, meaning I've been being informed by all this stuff of the world, but the majority of it's a lie, then even what I have will be taken away by force. Now who comes to take things by force? Satan comes, he comes to steal, he comes to kill and he comes to destroy. And when you read those four different types of soil and the first three types of soil, each time the enemy comes and takes it, specifically in that first type of soil, the word is sown, it gets into the heart of man and Satan comes and takes it by force, right? Because he'd much rather have you position to be continually uh, be informed by the world's information, which I'm not saying there's not some truth in that, but just the partial truth is still what? It's still a lie. Remember, Satan is very manipulative. He's very deceitful and he's very subtle. And, and when you think about it, if we're not cautious, our own carnal mind, our own flesh has a way of being sucked in to what the world's information ultimately is trying to offer us, right? Where there's something very um, luring about the world's information. And that's the enemy. You have to realize, and a lot of the time, people are taking in the world's information, the news media, all these different things out there, and they become consumed by it. And really, when you think about it, what, what, what can you even do with that information, right? It's constantly going back and forth, constantly changing. And once again, if you're relying on the news media, social media information, um, and not the truth of God's word, it's just a matter of time before even that information you have, it's going to be taken. And whatever, whatever truth you're taking in, if we're not really dialed into the word of God, if we're not rooted and grounded in the truth of the word of God, Satan will come to try to take whatever little truth that you have. So we've got to be very, very, very cautious, especially in this time with what we're hearing with what we're hearing, okay? It's like feeding the soul, it's feeding the spirit. What are we feeding the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions with? Because it will have an effect even on your physical body, amen? I wanna read this again. If any man has ears to hear, let him be listening and let him perceive and comprehend. That's what I believe we're doing right now. And he said to them, be careful with what you are hearing. 
The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more beside will be given to you who hear. I believe that's why he said in 2 Timothy 2.15, he said, study to show yourself approved. Study the truth to show yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I believe that's why he said in Joshua 1 and 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, or the word of God shall not depart out of your mouth. The truth shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate there in day and night. You'll study diligently. You'll continue to hear. You'll give it thought. Meditate in my word day and night. Then you'll prosper and then you'll have good success. Amen. Why? Because I'm committed to taking in the truth and the truth only. And the more that I do that, what do I then have the ability to do? I have the ability to discern and know and recognize when lies are being spoken, right? Maybe I'm not 100% sure, but I'm hearing something. It's like, man, this seems to, to contradict itself. One day they're saying one thing. The next day they're saying another thing. When I listen to it, I lose my joy. I lose my peace. I'm upset about this. All of these different things that this world system is attempting to do to us to bombard us with information that the majority of it does not line up with the truth of God's word. And that's really where your faith comes in because I'm not saying that there's information being given uh, about things that, 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 are, that aren't going on out there. They're going on out there. There's news that's being given that is actually happening, right? But the truth, like Jeff said here, the truth of God's word, the good news supersedes that. It's the same thing like I always go back to the example of when the 12 spies went to the promised land to see the promised land, right? 10 of them saw things that were, the, were factual. They saw the giants, they saw the fortified walls, they saw the, the great weaponry, they saw that even so much so, it was so overwhelming. They said, we are like grasshoppers in their sight. What did Joshua and Caleb see? They saw all the good. They saw the promise. They saw what God said, and they said, let's go in and possess it, right? So they both saw certain things, but Joshua and Caleb what were they focused on? What were they listening to? What were they hearing? What were they seeing? They were seeing the truth of what God had said. That's why the word of God is so vitally important, right? That's why spending that time in prayer, seeking God for his wisdom and instruction for yourself as to what it looks like to live the fasted life. Why? So that we can become more sensitive to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher. He is the trainer. He is the guide. He is the comforter. And then all of a sudden, with all this chaos, all of these um, hectic, just, just crazy situations that are taking place in this world on a daily basis, and all the information that's out there about them, then I start to realize, you know what? I'm going to give very little time to being informed about those things out there. Rather, I'm going to put my focus on the truth of God's word. I'm going to hear the truth. I'm gonna be committed to the truth. I'm gonna believe the truth. And with that, I will be given more. And the more truth that you're given, remember this, this is very, very important. Truth is the highest level of reality. The truth, your truth to you is the highest level of reality. And that's why I take such comfort in Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in the word of God, which is the very truth itself. Because now this is my highest level of reality. We're not going to be here very long on this earth. I'm focused on eternal life, but I'm also focused on the truth that eternal life has already been given to me. It's already been given to you in and through Christ, and you can start living eternal life right here, right now. The only thing that has to take place is we just have to be delivered from this physical body. If you've accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, you're already born again. You've already been connected to God. Now there's just some work that has to take place in the soul, in the mind, will, and emotions, to continually think with the mind of Christ, to have your mind renewed with truth. And now you come to that place where you know what? Yeah, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, by hearing the truth of God's word. So I am committed to hearing this information, this good news as much as possible. And when I do that, now I can trust and be assured that more will be given to me and I can walk in a place of faith, a place of grace, a place of love, a place of wisdom and a place of power in and through him each and every day. So Father, we just thank you right now that you are really, really helping us 
to be so much more cautious with what we're hearing, the information that we are taking in. Father, I thank you right now that you are just redirecting our focus and causing us to focus, to really immerse ourselves in hearing the truth of your word, to come to a true knowledge of the truth himself, Jesus Christ, for you said in that grace and peace would be multiplied to us through the knowledge of God, through the knowledge of Christ Jesus, the truth himself. So Father, we thank you for it. We give you the praise and glory and honor, and I declare over each and every one that each and every one of us know the truth, and the truth has truly set us free. So we thank you for it, Lord, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome night.